about 10 years ago, I got back into photography and I was working over there in the east wall. And I'd come out of here and the traffic would be really bad. And uh, I decided uh, I'd park the car and I'd start photographing the landscape of Dublin, the way it had changed, the new and the old. So I'd wander around here at night time, taking photographs of buildings. And uh, one day, I, as I had the lens looking through the viewfinder, I saw this gang of guys sitting on the bench. And uh, as I went to click the button, they shouted at me and said, come here. And there was just that moment of, will I go or will I turn back and go back to my car? And I decided to approach them. And that began a connection that I began to photograph them for the next three years. Well, originally, when I first started photographing them, I called them the unwanted, because they always been moved on by security. And I felt it just didn't fit. And because we're right outside the custom house, I thought, well, what better than the custom house gang? Well, most evenings I used to photograph them after work. And one morning I was heading into work and I thought I saw two or three of them hanging around here. And uh, I stopped the car, came over with the camera, and they'd obviously slept here. And uh, they were <laughs> still in a bit of high spirits from the night before. Uh, I kind of produced the camera, took a photograph, and um, let them get back to sleep. And, you know, that was one of the few shots I took in the morning. Most of them were shot at about from 5.30 to 7.30 in the evening. As I got to know them, um, and I'd give them the photographs and take their photographs, one day one of them turned around and says, hey, do you want a tin? And I turned around and I told them, I says, uh, no, I don't drink. I haven't had a drink in a year. They were all shocked. And uh, I think they, like mo many Irish people, they were like, kind of, no, you don't drink? And I said, no, I, 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 I stopped drinking. And, um, and they had sort of admiration for me. And I remember two months later, um, I met them another time and I wasn't feeling good. I said, you know what, I feel like I'm back drinking. And they turned around, no, no, you can't go back drinking. You've got to stay sober. And I remember going home thinking it gave me an impetus to keep going. Like if these guys are telling me to stop drinking, I need to keep uh, staying sober. And uh, it sort of helped me. And, you know, they had sort of admiration. I think a lot of them had tried to get into rehab themselves. And I was able to tell them a little bit about my struggles and how I uh, became sober and the struggles I had in sobriety. And it kind of gave them a little bit of uh, a goal for some of them to get back or to try to get into rehab themselves. So I think that connection we have as regards um, drink uh, was very real and very important part of mine and their story. Where are you guys from? Are you yeah. from Dublin? Yeah, yeah, 100% the Liberties. Yeah, are, you, are you about the Liberties? No, yeah, well, I was born in Liberties. Yeah, well, I'm from, well, I was originally from yeah, Dundrum yeah. and then I uh, moved out to Dunleary. I think the interaction when taking photographs doing what I do, street social photography is really important. And it's probably something, it's probably my talent to doing it, is to be able to connect, have a human connection with that person for a split second. Well, the main kind of, wouldn't say leader of the gang, but the uh, guy I used to call with the muscle of the gang was a guy called Martin Joyce. And uh, Martin used to go out with a girl called Michelle, and I photographed them. And they were always together. I termed the uh, photograph Forever Lovers. And uh, about three years later, just at this spot here, I saw the two of them together. And Martin looked a lot frailer. And I, you know, I asked him, I said, how are you doing? He says, ah, oh, you know. He said, but I'm getting married. I'm getting married in two months. Will you photograph the wedding? I said, yeah, of course. Well, I don't really do weddings, but you know, I was going to make an exception. And I uh, took a photograph and I left. And I was a little bit haunted. But about 
three months later, I was down in Ring's End with someone who I didn't think even knew anyone in the Custom House gang. And I saw Michelle, and she was holding the photograph, the original photograph of Forever Lovers. And she looked very upset, and she told me, um, she didn't really have to say anything. She was holding that Forever Lovers photograph, and uh, Martin had been buried that day. And um, I was very moved. Uh, so much so that I contacted the Lord Mayor of Dublin and said, look, we've got to do something for him. And we put a, on an exhibition uh, in late 2009. And it was like a small celebration of Martin's life. Just over the course of that ten, uh, summer, 10 years ago, I used to, um, you know, go home and I'd, I'd run out prints of some of the photographs and uh, I became known as the photographer here. They got to know me and they'd kind of, they'd see me parking the car over there and um, sometimes I'd print, sometimes I didn't have prints, you know. And um, they were very encouraging of me going ahead and putting on an exhibition. I'd never had an exhibition before. The project did not start about having an exhibition but someone had put it into my mind that I should exhibit this work. And I began to work with them about having a place that, uh, that would encompass them, that would allow them in, not just for the uh, art world, but for everybody. And, um, and that's how my first exhibition came into place. You know, they helped me. Um, and they would even give me a little bit of advice which photographs worked and which didn't. Um, so yeah, there was a kind of a, a collaboration, I guess, to put together uh, that exhibition that took place in early December 2007. And uh, yeah, it was a great accomplishment for me to put one on. There was a young girl, part of the Custom House gang called Yvonne. She came up to me and asked me, would I take a few photographs off her to give to her kids? And I spent a lot of that summer photographing her every day. I knew there was a beauty there, but I just couldn't get it. I kept photographing. And eventually I nailed it the, around September 07. And um, I put the photograph in the car to give to her. And I couldn't see her anymore. Right through the winter, she was never here. And um, the nights were getting darker. And about two months later, I met Philip, who was the leader of the Custom Mask Gang. And I ran up and said, Philip, I've got that photograph of Yvonne. And Philip looked at me and blessed himself. And he said, sadly, Yvonne passed away 